Hello and welcome to Country Sports TV. I'm Ian the Gun and in the workshop this week we've had a very interesting little pistol brought in. Flintlock, made in America, made in 1837 by Walters. Yes, we've got the pistol, the pistol's there, and a box of bits. The guy brought it in in a paper bag. We've got the lock, got the cock, got the frizzing spring, main spring, and two broken screws. All the rest of the screws are missing. So we've got to figure out what threads on the lock and make up the screws. Easiest way to find out what threads we've got, use, use a tap and get a tap that's the, reasonably the right size. Just see if it goes in to see if we've got the right size. And that's 6B8. Close as I can get to it, may not be exact, because um, in these days, uh, 1837, gunsmiths would make a die and make a tap. And if one broke, they would make dies and taps off of dies and taps. And you wouldn't get a universal size. So 6 ba is as close as I can get. And now we make up some screws. What we have got in the box is two broken bridle pins. That'll give me the right size and shape to make it. Um, the others we can work out are quite easy. Be the same thread. But you can see the thread's broken off on the end of that. Now it just needs remaking. And we make them the same style that was in there and try and copy the best we can uh, a 200 year old gun. When you've got the right size, match it up to the old pin, make sure we've got enough on the end for the thread. Yeah, that'll be about the right size. Well now we'll just thread the end. Now that's threaded the end, 6BA. And what we have got is a round Right on the end of the screw, or should I say pin, what we've got is a round on it. So all we've got to do now is, is put a round on it. Let's move the camera. This is just done with a file. I just round off the end. Just so Right. And then polish the end off. And that should be it. We leave the head blank for now until we've um, matched it up and made sure it fits in the lock now. We'll see how that fits into there. That's right. And if you can see, we've rounded the end off and it's flushed the old screw there that you can see 
just your old sear spring screw is rounded off on the edge and comes through and mine could just come through just a little bit more but as you can see it matches you might just deepen the thread a little bit on that so that it comes through just a little right there you are we've uh, made it slightly longer let it come through a little bit more and rounded it off so it looks right right so we've got uh, there's the tumbler there's the bridle that goes on somebody at some stages uh, raised it up together in the center there where it's cracked we made a pin up for the other side as well as you can see I'm trying to get the thing in focus as we're going that one in and this one I still haven't finished off I finished the other one off this goes in And it's there, you can see it's still got the head on it. We've still got to cut that off, still blanked off. The other one I've done is a cheese head with just a slot in it. There's no need to worry about that, so that the slots being um, fore and aft on the inside of the locks. It's so old, it's really not going to matter. If it was a Purdy or a Churchill, we would blank the head off and then see how it goes in and then mark the head or, or mark the slot uh, and then take it out and put the screw slot in so that it went fore and aft. Right, we've um, got the screws uh, made. They're in keeping. The other screw that was missing was the main spring and the fris frizzing spring screw. So we we knocked up some more screws, frizzing spring, and we rounded that off on the edge in keeping. So it's the right size. We've done keep screw for the cock. That's done. We've also done a little screw, a little pin, and that is for the mainspring, which is also missing. I asked the customer how he got this. Um, and he told me he bought it and all the parts were in a bag. He said uh, that uh, I was the expert and that I wouldn't know how to put it back together. Well, I've been doing these jobs for years. When I was an apprentice, when I was at Crushington's in Bath, we had a part-time retired gentleman by the name of Dick Chapman and Dick Chapman was an expert on antique firearms and he would repair make new cocks make a whole cock like that from scratch and chop top jaw and screw um, as I was an apprentice I used to have to cut the steel out of solid and drill the holes for him and then rough it out and he would come down and finish it off and as my apprenticeship went on uh, as time went on I was then making the chop jaw screws and then I was able to make the top jaws and then as time went on again I then started making the cocks myself and actually make 
a cup like that at a solid steel. Start off with a block, file it up, and you would use photographs in gum books. You know the coffee gum books you get with loads of antique firearms in. You would try and find the lock that matched what you were doing. That's the frizzing spring on. The frizzings on these were brass, so they didn't tarnish onto the plate. I thought that might have been an addition, but looking at the internet, it looks like they were all made like that, from original. On the main spring, use a spring clamp. I made this spring clamp, oh, thirty five years ago when I was in my doing my apprenticeship. Right, put it in place, lock it in place. That holds the spring. Take this pin, put the pin in. And then use a screwdriver. And then undo the spring. And then the cock will go on there. Fire to go forward. And then the cock spring pin. Then the uh, cock spring goes in place. And that's the lock back together. Now what's missing on the pistol is the ramrod. So what we've done, we've gone on the internet and we found a photograph that's of the same pistol. Obviously this will be the uh, other way round as you can see. All we've got to do now is make the ramrod and all the bits, which we've done. I know this only looks about five minutes on the video, but this has taken me all day to do. What we've done is, we've got a rod, got two little arms, that's riveted on there. And what we're doing now is we just tarnish it down, let it rust to make it, because you don't want shiny steel on an antique keep it in keeping with the firearm. It would have a ball on the end that's actually screwed onto there so it's locked on and then that goes in place on there. There we are. ramrod in place Yeah, I think that looks reasonably close. That's the drawing. That's the original. And that's the copy. I think that looks reasonably close to me. 
Here we are. 1 1837 single barreled flintlock pistol by Waters of America made in 1837 up together and ready for the customer to pick up. If you're wondering about value, I'm I'm not sure. Um, six to eight hundred pounds um, on the internet in America, they're selling from anything from a thousand pounds. A thousand dollars, I should say, to seven thousand dollars. But the one that was seven thousand dollars was in mint condition, and you couldn't say this was in mint condition. It is in good condition for its age, but it is not mint. Well, there you are. That's what I do. Uh, I repair antiques and try and get them as close as I can to the original. and get them working again.